Hello fellow tamers, did you dread on the mic? And in this video, I'm going over my EOS Mon debt profile. Ready, built, good to go. And I'm excited to share you my unique build that I've created, which is definitely something spicy. So, if this is the video for you as I break down all of my ratios and cards in this deck, then stick around and enjoy. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell because I do videos on the reg. So if ever do, let's break down the deck. So the DigiX, I run four Argomon. Argomon's a really nice card to have just because of its inheritable. On your turn, when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your unsuspend phase, gain one memory. One thing you'll need to know about using the Osmon is all about the memory gain that you need in order for you to execute the plays because you're going to be doing a lot of hard playing and you're very rarely going to be either win up. So having that nice bit of memory gain is always sweet though it's very rare it may happen but when it does it definitely comes clutch for you to execute your plays. And then lastly I won Pinamon. Pinamon is part of the new BT6 and when on Inheritable, when attacking once per turn, if you attack an opponent's Digimon, trigger one draw. So it just gives you that nice little bit of additional draw power if you are attacking into a Digimon. So this does not include if you're attacking into a Digimon in security, that's completely different. It has to be a essentially a suspended Digimon on the field. You manage to attack into that, then boom, that's going to obviously give you that nice bit of draw power there. Though the deck already has its kind of draw engine, so it's not really massively required, but if you manage to execute it, then it's, you know, it's an absolute benefit. So that is the DigiX. Let's go over to the rookies. For the rookies, I run eight in the deck. You're probably thinking, rather low ratio, but don't worry, it works. So I run four Morphemon in the deck. This is pretty much staple. Morphemon is key for you to get Manoa out on the field and as well as for you to search out your Eosmon. Also, it adds that nice bit of pressure on early game just for you to kind of attack security because you ideally, you just want to get this Mon killed. Unfortunately, poor Morphemon has to hit the deck, but it's all for a good cause. Because on deletion, reveal the top, top five cards of your deck Add one Manoa and Bellucci and one Digimon card with Eosmon in its name amongst them in your hand. Then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. So a really powerful search effect right here and is massively staple in this deck. So this is the reason why I run four as standard and it's definitely highly recommended. And then I run four Wormmon. So Wormmon is a fantastic mon just because of the additional search effects that it has it's slightly weaker in terms of the search than morphemon but it enables you to get out eos mon which you need eos mon in your hand so same again on deletion reveal the top three cards of your deck add one level four or level five digimon card amongst them to your hand place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order and putting the cards in a particular order definitely counts because you're going to be doing a whole lot of searching when it comes to playing an EOS Mon deck so definitely be vigilant on that so the main trend with these two particular cards is essentially just attacking security and hoping that they actually get deleted even if they have a blocker on the field go you know if they do the blocker then sweet it means that you you know you, you're dead so then that deletion effect is going to proc off mean that you can search out key cards in order for you to execute your plays efficiently and quickly so that's my rookies let's go over to the champions now the champions i run eight champions in this deck yes once again rather low but it's all about eos mom they're the main ones that you want to be getting out, especially level fives. So I'm running four level four Eosmon. Really powerful card right here. And the thing that I like about it is the on play effect, which you may play one white tamer card with the play cost of four or less from your hand without paying its memory cost. Then your opponent may play one tamer card from their hand without paying its memory cost which once again is really a double-edged sword so 
ideally you want to play this right about the right time nine times out of ten when i've actually played this card they don't actually have a team that they can play but it's one of those things that you do need to be careful of but ideally when you are hard playing this bad boy you are aiming to get your manoa out then you'll be able to nicely set up your draw engine which is going to help you just pinpoint your ES mom in order for you to have that consistency that you need also it does have a pretty powerful inheritance book when attacking you may play one white tamer card with a play cost of four or less from your hand without paying its memory cost so once again really powerful if you're you know stockpiling those tamers in your hand be able to just get those out efficiently when you are swinging if you've evoed into your eosmon level five you got this underneath really powerful to just get those tamer cards out because the tamer cards help your level six in order for the stockpiling effect to kind of come to fruition and also the deletion effect which is incredibly powerful so this is the reason why i won four in the deck as standard and you should not run any less then lastly i won three woodmon really good blocker really nice to have very cheap play costs trust me this boy has come clutch <laughs> real clutch ideally you know like any deck you got a brick you got a brick pretty hard and the bad thing about the elsman deck is that if you're not evoing your draws can be a little bit slow um which you know it can happen and woodmon just helps just stop the aggression coming at you from the opposition so it really comes clutch when you manage to get this in your hand cheap play cost of five pretty much your main play cost that you're going to be doing hard playing is going to be around about five with this deck so having a five cost blocker with 6k dp is perfect for you to just stall out a little bit until you can get the cards you need in order for you to claim the win so this is the reason why i won eight champions in deck so let's talk about the ultimates let's discuss the main mon of the deck the eos mon level five and i'm running 13 of this bad boy the reason why is because you want to be seeing this mon in your hand because this mon is going to be doing a lot of work the whole swarm premise is built in to this mon and the thing that makes this mon rather unique is that it breaks all forms of you know the general rules of playing four of a particular mon because you're able you're able to play 50 copies of this mon if you want to but i'd strongly go against that because your security is going to be hella weak so apart from playing able to play 50 copies when attacking you may play one level five or lower eos mon from your hand without paying its memory cost a very powerful ability to have because it enables you to set up some crazy plays in order for you to get a whole lot of cards in your hand so let's go for example so i hard play out the else one for five then i go in for the cheeky swing obviously my effect is going to go off and i'm going to play an eos mon so right there you've already got two eos mon out on the field obviously say if you know they didn't manage to take me out then eventually i'm gonna go for a swing i'm gonna play another eos mon then i'm gonna go for another swing again play another eos mon you get the drift it's the whole premise of this this deck is all about swarming and just breaking through that security you don't even mind if this if these mons get deleted because they also have another unique effect which really helps out the essentially the level six eos mon in order for it to do its work then just to combine as well if you go in with the 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 actual evolution play so say we've got eosmon level four you gotta go into eosmon level five then you're gonna go for a cheeky swing right there that's obviously gonna enable you to play another eosmon on top of that that's gonna enable you to play a white tamer for free obviously at the cost of four or lower so ideally you're going to play your manoa which is going to be fantastic right there but another cool play that you could essentially execute before you kind of do all this is say if you already got manoa out on the field 
you're gonna go into the Evo. Then you're gonna go for the swing. And then essentially what you could do right there, you could go in with an Eosmon right there. And then on play, you could essentially trigger off another white tamer so if you have another white tamer in your in your hand say you could either you know you could bring out depending on the game state you could bring out the old tai and Ashida on the field you could go in with a, a a takumi you know if they're if they've got a pretty heavy rookie based board boom that's gonna obviously just hold them off a little bit so then you've got options right there on top of that you then you're gonna trigger off the Manoa play. And then Manoa is gonna enable you to search out your deck out of three cards from the top. And if you get anything else on right there, that's gonna work well for executing some other plays. So there's a lot of chaining with this deck, a lot of kind of interactions that you just need to be wary of. But once you got those got those nailed down, this deck can get pretty crazy right here. And then on top of that, it does come with a pretty cool inheritable. So on turn, um, this Digimon gains gets 1000 DP, which you think, yeah, that, that, that's all right. But trust me, when the boss monster comes out, that's when it gets spicy. But speaking of the boss monsters, I'm on 13, level 5 Yos Mom. Now, let's discuss the Megas time to reveal my boss monster the mega you guessed it guys it's the level six eos mom which i'm running at four so the thing i love about this mom is the artwork is absolutely on point but it's a stupidly strong digimon it has so much utility and spice it's just it just blows my mind it absolutely blows my mind so the thing that I don't like is the Evo cost. It is a five, it's rather hefty, but the trade-off is perfect. So let's read it out. When did you him for each tamer in play, and that does include myself and the opponent, you're able to place a level five or lower Eosmon from your trash to the top of the Digimon's Digivolution cards in any order. Then if you place two or more cards with the effect delete one of your opponent's digimon just flat out right no dp ties just delete one of the opponent's digimon so the thing i like is that it can really shaft a lot of players if they've spent their time in the raising area making their digimon look all nice especially jessmon players you already know it takes a lot of craft for building up in this in your raising area to then bump into Eosmon and this effect goes off, absolutely destroy it. I love it and it has come so clutch in the matches I've used Eosmon in. Then on top of that, on your turn, for every three Digivolution cards this Digimon has in it, it gains security attack plus one. So let's have a look at the play here because I mean I've got to explain for you guys. So when you're building up this stack, ideally it's gonna kind of look something like this. You're gonna have your Eosmon and then you're gonna have your big big daddy at the top. So with this you can put it in any order. So ideally you could put the level four Eosmon in between level the two level fives. It really depends on the situation depends on what kind of deck you're facing but the thing that makes this really good is obviously if you've got more than more than two in the actual stack you're able to delete your digimon and then because i've got three in the source i'm able to get a discord task attack plus one and obviously depending on how many tames you got out on the field and that's obviously yourself and the opposition you could get a whole swarm of Eosmon out because it also gets the inheritable that this Digimon gains 1000 DP off the level 5 Eosmon, meaning that currently at the moment I'm sitting at 15k, which is going to be sweeping out the opponent's security whilst I'm doing those additional checks. On top of that, because I do have the level 4 Eosmon 
I will have the inheritable. So if I go for a cheeky swing, it enables me to then play a white tamer out for free if the cost is four or lower. Mean that I can get Monero out on the field, which is gonna be really good in order for me to get that draw engine kind of going and search out my deck for more Eosmon. So this is what I mean by how this deck is so versatile, so unique and so fun. It's it blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind how fun this deck is to use. And people do call it a bit of a meme deck, but you know what? I live for the memes. I eat memes for breakfast. <laughs> so, that's my Eosmon deck right there in terms of Digimon. Let's go over to the option cards and tamers because it's a little bit spicy, I'm not gonna lie. For the tamers, I run four Manoa Bellucci. This is staple, standard. The reason why, because it's a powerful card and start your turn, if you have two memory or less, you can reset that to three. So you can't be choked. No choke in here. And you don't want to be choked in any else mom deck. Because you are going to be hard playing a lot of your mons. And a lot of my mons cost five. So enabling me to start free means that essentially I'm going to choke the opposition if needs be and give them two. So the other effect is on turn, when you play an Eos Mon, you may suspend this tamer to reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one Tamer card or one Digimon card with Eosmon in its name amongst them to your hand. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Like I've mentioned before, order does matter because you're going to be cycling through your deck a fair bit. Then, on the opponent's turn, while you have an Eosmon in play, your opponent's Tamers don't unsuspend during their unsuspend phase really really powerful especially if you're facing off with a deck that relies on you know them suspending if they suspend once and i've got the Eosmon in the deck they can't resuspend that they can't just boom flicking back up that will be literally locked out so essentially it's only got one, one use the same essentially could apply for if i'm facing off against another Eosmon deck if they have a Minoam on the field and they also have an Eosmon, if obviously for me, if I'm playing execute my plays nicely, it means I can't tap that out until I've got rid of their Eosmon, which is something that you just need to be wary of because it can happen. But ideally, when you are playing with Eosmon, getting this out is going to be really nice for you in order for you to kind of utilize having these tamers on the field to build up the level sixes capability of either deleting the opposition if they get two eosmon underneath the stack or if they get three eosmon in that stack enable them to get an additional security attack so definitely a staple card to have extremely powerful and extremely adaptable then i run two tie and mat so this card is nice but you're not using it for the main full effect you're only using it for the top one start your turn if the opponent has a level six or higher digimon in play gain two memory so if they got their boss monster out and it comes to your turn you're a bit of a bind obviously if you have the manoa out then essentially you're going to be getting five memory which is going to be enough memory for you to kind of execute some plays if you have to go into your level six eos mon it means that it's going to be still your turn for you to delete one of their mods and go for a swing so having tie a map really helpful for the situation because the thing that i'm kind of forming with this deck is having that kind of board presence and making them really think about oh you know how should i be playing my board because along with having tie and mat i also have the takumi which takumi right here is definitely a powerful team to have and i'm in three one it costs two to part play, which is really good. So if you're obviously in a bit of a bind, you can re-choke out the opposition. If they choke out one, you've not got your Manoa out. You can essentially just re-choke them out with a, you know, with a nice Takumi play, putting them back on one. Though, ideally, if you have the Eosmon level four in your stack, or if you've just hard played it, 
um, and you've not got no tamers, well, you're really happy to get Takumi. Obviously, another good option to bring out. Just obviously gives you that nice tamer presence in order for Yasmin level 6 to really proc off nicely and just absolutely start clapping cheeks, which you do want. But the main thing with Takumi here is on turn, when you're when one of your Digimon Digivolves, you may suspend this tamer and trigger the one draw. So this is good for that additional draw power, which is gonna help you out. So if you go for the go for the evolution, depending on who you want to evolve. So if you've got level four yes man, evolve into level five, boom, go for the suspend, able to draw out a card for you to then hopefully maybe get another EOS Mon and then can go for the swing and summon out that EOS Mon, which is gonna be helpful right there. And then if you do have the Manoa, you can suspend go in with the spend on that and you see where I'm going with this. The constant engine of drawing cards is going to be a thing that you want to happen in the deck. And then lastly, the absolute wild card is too easy in jet. And this is strong because when I talk about essentially making the opponent think about their board presence and being punished for it so if they got a level six or higher they're being punished for it and giving me memory if with this card out on the field at the start of your turn if the opponent has two or more digimon in play i also gain two memory so i'm gonna be gaining i should be literally sitting on five nine times out of ten depending on the situation if they're bringing that building out a wide board which is pretty common in this current meta at the moment then this is going to be beneficial right there if they happen to have a level six and also a wide board that means i'm getting four memory and then if i've got manoa out that's then obviously hard reset on to three making me pretty comfortable at seven <laughs> seven memory in an Eosmon deck, you can do a lot with that. You're going for the level, level 6 Eosmon play pretty comfortably, going for the swing and bring something else out if need be. So, really powerful card to have. And if you manage to get two of them out, absolutely fantastic. Ideally, the perfect scenario for Eating Joe is to have them in my security. Obviously, when the opposition goes in for a swing and that bad boy drops, they're like, oh damn. Now they're making me have enough memory to really proc off some awesome plays, which is going to be great. So this is why I'm on the tuna deck. Could flex it to three if I wanted to, but two is just okay. So then, to the option cards, I run two Fisted Onslaughts. So this is super clutch, and I prefer this than Guy Fox. I know you're thinking, what the hell are you talking about, did you dread? Honestly, this has come super clutch. The reason why I like this over Guy Fox is essentially it deletes all of your opponent's Digimon with the highest place player cost. So ideally, when you're playing Guy Force, you're gonna be going for the basically the you know the boss monster, which is also the highest um, play cost that they're gonna that they're gonna have. With this, it deletes all. So, say if I'm facing off with another Eosmon deck, they're absolutely swarming out my board. Well, swarming out, just got everyone out, and I'm just like, whoa. They go for the attack, they bump into this insecurity, that's literally destroyed their whole board because they're the same level of a play cost of, of, play cost of five, which is just going to absolutely shaft them. And this has become super clutch. The reason why I play quite a hefty option card base in this deck, like more security control, is because if you have too much EOS Mon in your deck, you've got a weak security. Like nine times out of 10, half of your EOS Mon are pretty much in your security if you're flooding out your deck with EOS Mon. So you just, for me, I can need that nice bit of fine balance of how to actually get rid of their, rid of their, um, their boss monsters if I've not got my own boss monster out who can effectively just delete them uh, if under the right conditions. So, Fisted, I, Iron Fisted Onslaught is definitely a card that I love running, especially since I'm running into Joe. means I'm actually able to play this out for my hand or, you know, ideal scenario, it being in my security. And then lastly, pretty staple, we run four Cutting Edge. Cutting Edge is an absolute clutch 
card right here, super strong, because at a play cost of six, you can you play one level five or lower EOS mod from your hand without paying its memory cost, then delete one of the opponent's Digimon with DP less or equal to the Digimon played with this effect. So if I'm obviously bringing out the level level five EOS mod, then I'm going to be I'm going to have the ability to delete a 6,000 DP Digimon, which is really strong. Well, that's summoning out an Eosmon from my hand. The only bad thing with this is if you if you've not got an Eosmon in your in your hand, this effect does not work because essentially you've not tied a value to it. So it's a bit of a waste in that sense. Also, if you manage to get this out from your security, you're unable to play this main card effect. So once again. The reason why I like this is because it just gives me that nice bit of options to kind of swarm out the board if it's the opponent's turn. If this happens to be in, the, in my security, boom, I'll be able to just get rid of one of their kind of rookies to champions and get any else one out ready for my turn to essentially start swarming. So this is the reason why I run four in the deck and I would advise doing the same. You can knock it down to three if you wanted to. You could go three, three on the fisted um, onslaught and cutting edge but i feel like with cutting edge you are getting that benefit of just that additional kind of play power which comes a long way and can really turn the time in battle so we've gone over the tamers and option cards let's go over the final thoughts so there you have it fellow tamers my eosmon deck profile absolutely enjoy using this deck so much fun falling in love with it it's it's that crazy i love the interactions that this this deck has the complexity in terms of obviously for me being a new player is understanding the flow and the combinations that you can kind of do and i just hope that eosmon kind of keeps getting that support obviously we do have the new eosmon and bt7 which is going to be a good option for fellow tamers like myself just to go into a different eos mom for a cheaper cost keeping our turn and just making more cool plays especially since we were able to essentially play out a fair few level five eos mods out on the turn it's gonna be good in order for us to just swarm the field even more so i'm absolutely excited for bt7 but let me know in your comments what you think to the deck and i hope everyone has an awesome day that's your boy Digi Dread off the mic.